Hi, sir. Hello, Amy. How are you doing? I'm all right. How are you? Good, good. Nice. So, how is the practice going on in calculation, calculus related questions? Uh, it's good. It's just um, I'm actually finding it a little bit tricky on sketching the derivative. I don't know. Okay. It's not really working. Like, I got the stuff. Like, I know that you need to have the critical points and I got the local minimum and maximum, but actually putting it on a graph, I'm just okay. finding it. And then vice versa. Perfect. So, uh, curve sketching is a unit which we are going to do after uh, two or three lessons. Okay. So I'm actually at present providing you with different tools which can help you to sketch a graph. Okay, so think like this. Now we'll today elaborate more on what we had learned last time so that we can understand our function better and we can actually sketch a curve uh, in slightly better way. <clears throat> so last time uh, we learned about how to find the maximum and minimum using the first derivative. Right? So once you find the first derivative, you know the critical points and once you identify all the critical points which are the points where the derivative could be zero or the derivative may not exist so all these are critical points now we need to analyze these critical points as we move from left to right on the curve so on each critical point we have to see does the derivative change from positive to negative or from negative to positive that is to say Will the graph change from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing? If it changes from increasing to decreasing, that means we have reached a maximum. But if it changes from decreasing to increasing, that means we have hit the minimum, correct? Mm -hmm. So that was the whole criteria. Now, finding maximum minimum, we'll also learn today uh, about the second derivative, which could also help us in figuring it out with simple calculations. But before that, we have to really see our graph closely and define increasing and decreasing intervals. So this understanding increasing, decreasing intervals for a given function or its gradient is kind of very important. And that plays a huge role. So we'll actually practice more on this. And I hope after that, you'll be in a better position to sketch the graph of polynomials and other functions, okay? So let me share the screen with you. And we'll talk about increasing, decreasing uh, functions and increasing, decreasing intervals. So is the screen clear to you? Yeah. So Amy, today we'll discuss uh, the first uh, three points, which are basically uh, increasing and decreasing functions and increasing and decreasing intervals. Then we'll take a few examples and have practice tests on this particular concept. And then we'll move forward with the other topics which relate to concavity, higher order derivatives, and further derivative tests. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. Now, when I say that a function is increasing, what does it really mean to you? Um, so concavity is, is going up. Okay. So, so there are so many terms which we have seen. Let's be very basic and simple. When I say function is increasing, like x cube, all throughout the value of the function increases, right? If you oh. check any two points in the neighborhood, the point on the right has a higher value all along the curve. So, so those are the increasing functions. So increasing functions are the functions whose value keep on increasing as the x value increases all along their domain correct some of the common diagrams which you could see or the graphs which you could see is kind of like this if the function is kind of like going up and up right it is always increasing correct you mm -hmm. see the function kind of increasing correct here yeah. kind of a cubic function square root function these are the examples of functions which are always increasing in their domain right so when we say increasing function, we literally means that the value of y value keeps on increasing as the x value increases. Is it okay? Yeah. So that is increasing function. Now, how do we test whether a function is increasing or not? So the best way to test is to find the derivative. Derivative gives you the gradient or rate at which it increases or decreases. If the gradient is positive for all the values in the domain, 
that means the function is always increasing correct mm -hmm. so in example one we'll just check whether the function is increasing or not so the question is show that the function 2x cubed plus 3x minus 10 is an increasing function remember when we say increasing function we are considering the whole domain right not a small portion of it okay mm -hmm. so the best way is we know the function just find the derivative in this case 2x cubed plus 3x minus 10 is your function and the derivative will be 6x squared plus 3 correct yeah this value of 6x squared plus 3 is it always positive or not Um, do you have to sub make it equal to zero? Okay, if you make it zero, then if you try to solve it, it is never zero, right? Because if you take yeah. the other side, it is negative three, and square is always positive, correct? Mm -hmm. So it is never negative, never zero. However, if you see the equation itself, 6x squared, the first term is always non negative, right? Yeah. Be zero. Now we have added three to it. That means it is always either three or greater than three. Correct? Uh, yeah. So derivative is always greater than three means it is always positive. It is always greater than zero. So this function is always increasing. You get the idea? Yeah. So simple test is to find the derivative and then check what result you get. Now you can provide reasons for how do you explain that this is always positive? You can say, well, the gradient here is always greater than or equal to three. Since six x squared is a positive number, it is zero or more, and you're adding three to it. Is that correct? Yeah. So that is how we get, and you can see the function which is drawn on this side, which is always increasing. Correct? Mm -hmm. It does have a gradient equal to zero at the point which is kind of flattened up. Right? But if you see, the, if you draw a tangent line at any point on this particular graph, it will be non-negative. It will be always rising. Is that clear to you? So we yeah. see that. So we can say that this function is always positive. Perfect. Now here is a question for you. Question number one. Show that the function f of x equals to 2x cubed plus 3x squared is not an increasing function. Okay. How will you show that? So you find the derivative. Yes. Uh, which would be 6x squared plus 6x. Correct. And then, wait, what did I say? 6x squared. Yes. So that would always be positive, greater than zero. And the 6x would... Would be positive or negative. Because that x term yeah. could be positive or negative, right? So... So it what? has both components of being positive and negative. So this function is not always positive. And when you graph this gradient, no. which is 6x squared plus 6x, it's a parabola, right? Which has got two zeros. And so it has to turn back. So parabola, clearly speaking, is not a positive function in this particular case, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Because it is going below, it has got two zeros, right? When you say... 6x squared plus 6x, 6x, 6x is common, it has a 0 at 0, x equals to 0, correct? Yeah. The other term also will give you a 0. Perfect. Mm -hmm. so, so definitely, when the graph has to go through two zeros, it will change its sign. Both are linear zeros, correct? Yeah. So when it changes sign, it becomes positive and then negative. Perfect. So it, it is negative in part of its interval. Therefore, the function is not always increasing. Correct? Okay. So would you just describe that as increasing and decreasing? Yes, it will be increasing. Oh, okay. Now, getting back to our first case, where again, the first derivative was a parabola. However, this parabola was translated three units up. So it never crossed the x-axis. It does not have any zeros. You see that point? Oh, yeah. So both are parabolas. However, the second one has two x-intercepts. Now, if you have to go from one x-intercept to the other, you have to cross this x-axis. And once you cross the x-axis, you will be positive on one side and negative on the other side. Mm. So definitely, I mean, this is an explanation. But when you are working on a piece of paper, you can definitely see 
see that yes, it goes through a negative portion, and therefore this function is positive only in some interval, negative in some other interval. Correct? Yeah. Perfect. Now let's look into another example, which is always decreasing. As you've seen, 1 over x, the reciprocal function, is a very good example where it is always decreasing. Correct? Mm -hmm. So in this particular case, I'm saying a function is always decreasing if the value of the function is always lesser and lesser as you move from left to right. So clearly you can see, if you're moving from left to right, it is almost zero, but becoming more and more negative. Correct? There is, however, a discontinuity, a vertical asymptote. And that's not in the part of the domain. Now, when you begin from a value which is very close to x equals to 2, it has a very high value. But as you move towards the right, the value again decreases. So overall, during this interval, the function is always decreasing. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Now, the equation of this particular graph is f of x equals to 2x plus 1 over x minus 2. To show that this function is always decreasing, what should we do? Find the derivatives. Correct. And um, make it sure, make sure that it's less than zero. Perfect. That's what I did. So this is your function. Find the derivative. You learn the quotient rule, right? So apply the quotient rule, find the derivative, simplify your expression. What you get at the end is minus 5 over x minus 2 whole squared. Now the denominator x minus 2 whole squared is always positive, however, minus 5 is negative. And therefore, the function is always less than 0. The derivative mm. of this function is always less than 0. Since the derivative is negative, all throughout the domain of the function, we can say that the function is always decreasing. Does it make sense to you? Yeah. Now this increasing function and decreasing function is a very important part of your GCSE examination. And therefore, I've taken these examples in between. You get oh. the idea, right? So, yeah. so what we're doing here is we learned the product rule, the quotient rule, the power rule, all those rules, correct? Now, you are in a position to actually find the derivative of any given function, right? So now, you can find the derivative, analyze, and write down your answer. It is increasing or decreasing function, perfect? Now here is another question for you. You can take a picture of this and then later answer this particular question. Yeah. Okay. Now the idea here is, uh, let me just uh, move on to the next question. Okay. Now we will talk about the concept of increasing and decreasing interval. Well, most of the functions are not always increasing or always decreasing, correct? There are very few mm -hmm. functions you'll come across which are always increasing or always decreasing. Most of the time, the function will increase, then decrease, and so on, right? Uh, it may not increase also. It could be a horizontal line for a long period of time. So it is a combination of increasing and decreasing. But <clears throat> so, so we have intervals of increasing and intervals of decreasing, correct? So in mm -hmm. this particular part of the video, we'll learn what is increasing interval and what is decreasing interval so as defined here increasing interval is the range of the values of x for which the gradient is positive right so here the gradient is positive all along this path and also along this path is that clear to you yeah so the range of x means the x value so the x values on the left side these values and the x values on the right side of the origin. So these are the x values for which we have positive gradient, right? Because the graph is increasing all throughout. So mm -hmm. when you want to write down the interval of increasing, you will include both these as given in the last line. Correct? Does it make sense? Yeah. yeah. So that is how you have to see. Uh, how did we get to that place? We need to find the derivative. So the steps are similar. Write down the function, find its derivative. It's good to factor, it becomes easier. Now, once you get to this part, now there are different ways of analyzing which are the intervals where the function is positive or the derivative is positive or derivative is negative. 
So one of the thing which you have learned is the interval table, correct? Mm -hmm. So with this derivative itself, you could make interval table and then find out the intervals where the function is positive, I mean, the, the gradient is positive and where the gradient of the function is negative. If mm -hmm. the gradient is positive, the function is increasing. If the gradient is negative, function is decreasing, right? So that is one thing you could do. The other thing you could do is you could graph the gradient. So you, it's a parabola with two zeros, x equals to zero and x equals to minus four. And it's a parabola which opens up. So through these two zeros, you can get your graph moving from quadrant two to quadrant one, correct? Mm -hmm. So you know the graph and from the graph itself, you'll come to know when is the gradient above the x-axis, that means it is positive in that interval, and when is the gradient below the x-axis? That means it is negative in that interval. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. So here, when you check this gradient, which is 3x times x plus 4, that really means the gradient is 0 at x equals to 0, correct? That is 3x is 0 and at yes. minus 4. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Those are the two points where the gradient is 0. And now, we know it's a parabola which will be going kind of like this. Is it clear? Yeah. So is that the graph of the derivative? De gradient. Derivative. You are correct. That is the graph of the derivative or the gradient. Correct? Mm -hmm. so that is your parabola. And clearly you can see that the portion which I have shown here is where the gradient is positive. So the function is increasing in this part. Can you connect them? Wait, so can I minus connect? infinity to minus 4, yeah. the gradient, which is a parabola, is positive. It is above the x-axis. The function itself, which was a cubic function, is increasing. Mm -hmm. So this increasing function and the gradient being positive correlate, right? All right, okay. Interval yeah. in which we have a positive or increasing function a positive gradient is minus infinity to minus four. Mm -hmm. The same thing happens on the right side of origin. The parabola is cross the x-axis and it is positive thereafter. Yeah. The gradient is positive, that means the function is increasing. So the increasing interval is from zero to infinity. So both these intervals when combined gives you the total interval where the function is increasing. You get the idea. Mm -hmm. Correct? Similarly, the middle portion which is between minus 4 and 0, the gradient is negative. It is below the x-axis. So in this particular interval, the function is decreasing. Decreasing, yeah. You get the idea? So mm -hmm. if you have to find the increasing and decreasing interval for the function, Amy, can you summarize what should you do? Um, so there are two ways. So once the function's given, you find the derivative and um, you can use the interval table and um, plot the points down and then find, uh, just choose uh, some points and find whether it's increasing or decreasing. Or you can graph it and look from the graph and see that, so if the function no, so you so you you factored out the derivative, getting three x bracket x plus four. So we know the derivative is zero at x equals zero and x equals minus four. Okay. So you plot the two points, then you uh, sketch the parabola, yeah. and we can see that um, so at minus four um, to the left, um, the function is increasing. Yes. So that's an increasing interval. And then x being greater than zero on the right hand side, um, it's also above the uh, x axis. So therefore, it's also increasing. Perfect. However, between minus four and zero, um, you can see from the graph that the interval is below the x axis. So it's a decreasing interval. You are right. Now, coming back to your description, initially, when we use the interval table, in that case, we're trying to find the interval 
where the derivative is positive or where the derivative or the gradient is negative. So the point which you have to select is zeros are at zero and minus four. So zero and minus four are two zeros which are going to divide your plane into three regions, right? So you have to take test points in an interval from minus infinity to minus four and then from minus four to zero and then from zero to infinity and better use a point which is close by so you could use a point which is less minus five as your test point you could take a point which is like minus one in between minus four and zero and one which is on the right side of zero so when you plug in those points in the derivative you will get positive on this side negative here and positive on that side correct so from the interval table you know that the derivative itself is positive when you are on the left side of minus 4. That means in the interval, which is from minus infinity to minus 4. Uh -huh. And it is negative in the interval, which is between minus 4 to 0. So that means the function is decreasing in this interval between minus 4 and 0. Correct? Yeah. And in the third interval, it is positive, right? Since both values will be positive, 3x and x plus 4. 4x equals to 1, for example. So again, the function is increasing. Now that's clear, right? And as you said correctly, we could actually graph the function parabola and easily see where the graph is above the x axis. That is where the gradient is positive and the function is increasing. If the graph is below the x axis, the gradient is negative and the function is decreasing. Perfect. Now let's take uh, another example now. Uh, which is kind of reverse calculation. It is examination style question based on the concept which you have learned today. So, Amy, I would like you to read this part, reverse calculations. Right. Um, functions with negative gradient for all values of x is called decreasing function. Graph shows combination of increasing functions. Example three, function for given increasing interval. So find a possible value of integers b if the function f of x equals x squared plus bx plus one is increasing in the interval of minus one to one. Okay, so let me explain the question to you. Find a possible value of, actually there were two values I removed a, we are only working with b. So I made that A as a constant one, okay? So just to make it simple, and that value really doesn't uh, affect the question. So, so the question is, find a possible value of integer B if the function f of x equals to x squared plus bx plus one is increasing in the interval minus one to one, both included, correct? So we, are, we have, uh, don't look at the graph at present because that, is a part of solution which will come later and might confuse you in the beginning okay so in this particular question what we're trying to say is that the the function is increasing at least in this particular interval you get the idea right so at yeah. least in this particular interval it is increasing it could be increasing in a larger interval but assume that this is at least increasing from minus one to one find the value of b that is your question. Is that clear to you? Mm -hmm. Now, how do we do that? The strategy to solve such questions is definitely first to find the derivative. So we have our function, which is x squared plus bx plus 1, and you find the derivative of the function, which is 2x plus b, right? Mm -hmm. The third term, which was 1, it could be any constant. We could write a there, right? a, anything. But when you take the derivative, then that becomes 0. So that constant does not really play a role in changing the interval of increasing and decreasing. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. The constant actually moves the graph up and down and not changes the shape. And therefore, it does not really affect the increasing and decreasing interval, correct? Mm -hmm. So if I move a graph up and down, increasing and decreasing interval remains the same. So if in your question we have a parameter a here, then the value of a will never change our answer. Is it a could be anything? Is it clear to yeah. you? So yeah. in your examination, you might have uh, that integers a and b, 
where is a constant without coefficient of any x in that case it is just a factor which translates your graph up and down and will not be affecting increasing and decreasing interval now this question we could also write in a multiple choice question saying out of these parameters uh, which will not affect the interval of increasing and decreasing in that case again we could say that constant is it clear to you yeah that number one in this case now simply finding a gradient makes it absolutely clear so when you find the gradient it is 2x plus b so the two things which are really affecting are the position of x and definitely what is b right b will also change the value of our derivative right mm -hmm. so now since we are saying that it is increasing that means the gradient should be positive for a positive gradient we can solve this inequality and we can say b is greater than minus 2x right we get that value now we are given that it is positive in this particular interval which is from minus 1 and 1 so at least we have two values for x why not substitute them and check what could be possible value of b right yeah so substitute minus 1 and when you substitute minus 1 in b is greater than minus 2x that becomes b is greater than 2 correct mm -hmm. when you substitute x equals to 1 you get b is greater than minus 2 now you have to look for a solution of b you're saying b is greater than 2 and b is greater than minus 2 so what should be the solution definitely if b is greater than 2 it will be greater than minus 2 also yeah so any value of b which is greater than 2 is our answer so when the question says find a possible value you could just write three four five six any value clear oh, okay yeah. sometimes they might give you in multiple choice some values you may select the right one but that has to be greater than two do you see how to solve this question right yeah now so i assume that i just wrote b equals to three you could choose any if you take b equals to three this is what you get parabola all right okay for the for the given uh, function and you can clearly see that from minus one to one uh, it is this is minus one right and one is somewhere there the graph is increasing do you see that mm -hmm. now i could have taken b equals to slightly anyway it was integer so i had to take a whole number if i take b equals to two then this minus one will be on my vertex Correct. Vertex meaning. <laughs> meaning uh, it will shift. Uh, the parabola will shift right. Now, when I took b as b, the value of b. Well, try it out. So take the value of b equal to two. Okay. I've taken three. Then you will see that the vertex of the parabola, the turning point, is at x equals to minus one. Oh, okay. Is at minus one. Well. When we are saying positive, normally, we'll consider zero as a positive value. Is that clear to you? So mm -hmm. I'm actually trying to be safe in writing b greater than 2. In this case, it could be greater than equal to 2. So oh. equals to 2 will also be a correct answer in this particular case. Because it goes from zero to positive value, and in this interval, I mean, it's increasing, right? So mm -hmm. we do suffice the condition, which is from minus one to one x value, the function is increasing. Mm -hmm. You get the idea? Yeah. So minus, uh, I mean, two could have been a possible value also. However, avoid such points which are kind of endpoints. Right. Safe, especially because you're given a choice, choose any value, right? So why not a safe value? Yeah. Is that clear? But I'm talking about the concept uh, and the values possibility. Since in multiple choice, you might get a value 2, 3 also, right? In that case, mm -hmm. one of the choices could be both, right? Both okay. 2 and 3. Is that clear to you? Yeah. So, so be careful on this part. Now, when we say function is decreasing, we normally avoid 0. So strictly, we'll go less than in that particular case. Is that clear to you? Yeah. So non-negative, I mean, non-negative is, is increasing and negative is decreasing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So now let's take the last example on this particular page. And that is where we are going to end our today's class. Example four. Function for a given increasing interval. Find the range of the value of x for which the gradient of f of x equals to x cubed minus x squared plus 2x is less than 10. Right? So we are not saying increasing or decreasing. We are mm -hmm. saying that the gradient of this function should be less than 10. Right? Mm -hmm. So how will you do it? Well, clearly, you will find the gradient. You are given the function. You will find the gradient and then the inequality should be solved that this gradient which you found should be less than 10. That is the condition, correct? Mm -hmm. So, strictly speaking, it is a solution of an inequality. When you work it out, this is your inequality. You can at this stage uh, use different methods to solve inequality which you have already learned and then derive at this particular solution. You could also sketch a graph or a parabola, right? And then you know it is less than zero negative in between the values of minus four over three and two. So that becomes your solution. Yeah, makes sense. That could be another type of question in your examination on this particular topic. Okay. Mm -hmm. The last question here is the graph of y equals to f dash x, f prime x or derivative of x is given right so that's the graph of a derivative not the function identify the interval with positive gradient four choices are given to you Amy. can you answer this question mm -hmm. so positive gradient mm. yes positive gradient can there be more than one answer oh yeah check check yeah tell me Oh, actually, never mind. Um, I thought two was given. Uh, so is it minus one? Oh, no, wait. The interval with positive gradient. The graph of gradient is given to you. Yeah, so, so it would have to be above the x-axis. Yes. So that's between zero and one, but that's not given, so. Yeah, that's not given. <laughs> uh, two and... No, 1.5 and 3. No, but 1.5 is below the x-axis. Yes, that's not what? right. Wait, wait, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry, B. You're right. Yeah. B, see? Very hard to see. B is correct. So 0.5 to 1. So this particular portion, do you see that part? Yeah. So simple question, but again, I purposely took this example because uh, in the last class also, I saw that your mindset of, you know, looking at a gradient uh, is still not very clear. So just mm -hmm. a big reminder to you that think what the graph is. If the graph is a function, look from a function point of view. Increasing is a different story altogether. Yeah. Right? So every y value, as you move from left to right, that should be increasing. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a gradient. The portion of the graph of the x, x axis is increasing, right? Yeah, because for a minute I was going to do the whole tangent thing and be like, oh, it's yeah. positive there, it's positive yes. there. It's already a tangent like, graph. <laughs> yeah, so you can't, so then you look for the axis and see if it's above. Correct. Oh, so okay. that brings us to the end of the session, Amy. Now it's time for you to revise and you know summarize what we have learned today. So, right. yes. So, um, uh, we learned uh, increasing functions, so they're just functions with a positive gradient, um, and decreasing functions are functions with a negative gradient. Um, then increasing interval is um, it's a range of x values that are uh, the gradient is positive, and decreasing interval is where there's a range of x values and the gradient is negative. Um, when so it's very important to look at the graph and see whether it's the derivative form or the function form. Um, and if they ask for so let's say increasing interval, um, you have to make sure you look at the graph because uh, if it was a gradient graph like a derivative form. Then if you said increasing, you're trying to look um, to see whether it's above the x-axis. However, if, if it was a normal function graph and it says find the increasing 
interval or something um then you just look where the tan like you could draw tangent and be like oh it's positive here so those would be the increasing Great. parts yeah Perfect. they're so similar but no they're not similar but like the wording is similar but it's actually very different so very you have to get that right okay mm. so it's a very important part towards understanding curve sketching uh, we uh, we need to find the exact behavior of the curve before we could accurately sketch and therefore this exercise yeah. is extremely important and now in our next session we'll learn about concavity in more details we have seen how to find maximum minimum analyzing the first derivative however if you find gradient of a gradient that is called the second derivative we can actually get the uh, maximum minimum easily uh, by just checking the value plus the second derivative will also help us to find the point of inflections where the concavity changes. And that's also a very important part of curve sketching. Now, okay. until we put all these pieces together, it is not really possible to sketch a good graph. Right? You can get my idea? So, oh, okay. so that's the reason. So you could actually at present also sketch the graphs of some of the polynomials because you know how to find maximum minimum and how to find the zeros. But the middle part, the shape of the graph, where will it be actually turning, is slightly tricky yet. So we'll actually equip ourselves with some more knowledge about okay, derivatives, cool. and then we'll be in a better position, okay? Yeah, because for a minute I thought I had to get it all done. I was like, I don't know, this is not working. Yeah, it will yeah. work. It will okay, work. Cool. So we are just uh, being, we'll be there in a day's yeah. time, okay? Makes sense. See you then. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks, my pleasure. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Yes.